You've probably heard this by now, but the skeptic feminist who's part of the feminist community murdered his girlfriend. You may think, oh, well, we don't know that for sure, but his friends and family pretty much confirmed, yeah, that's what happened. Now, why he did it? That's kind of up in the air. Some of his friends and family said that he did it because he took shrooms and thought his girlfriend poisoned him, so he murdered her for that. While others claimed that he had a war history and he was suffering from PTSD and he had an episode and that's what triggered it. Now to find out the truth, let's examine some evidence real quick. The skeptic feminist owns real world self-defense. And on that website, he claims that he was born and raised in Russia, traveled the world with the Peace Corps, and lived in many second and third world countries where he picked up all their martial arts practiced in those countries. He thinks he's a ninja. The skeptic feminist said he had dual citizenship in Russia and the U.S. and that he served as a sergeant in the U.S. Army. He listed qualifications in several life-saving techniques. Uh, the skeptic feminist entered the Virginia National Guard on March 3rd, 2006 and left the service on September 28th, 2008, according to a statement from the U.S. Army. His highest rank was private second class. But you see, that's just what the U.S. Army says. According to him, the U.S. Army is lying because his resume says something completely different. His resume says he continued his duty to spring 2009 and he became sergeant. So what does this mean? He lied about his military background, his rank, his length of service. He also lied about him serving overseas and he lied about pretty much everything else. Now I'm gonna show you a clip from Ralph Retort because he did a video on this and listen to what he has to say. If you go to that website and you have enough info on somebody, you can look up their active duty service. Thankfully for us, Alexander was enough of an idiot to have put up his social security number in one of his videos. It was provided to me. I confirmed all this. The only time he was on active duty during the times he claimed to have been uh, you know, involved with the military was on June 7th, uh, 2006 through July 31st, 2006. Now... That is most likely during his uh, basic training period, and he could have still been involved with the guard. It does look like he might have been, but you, it wouldn't have been active duty. And if you look at his old tweets, which I showed in the last video I did on this, he claims to have been in Afghanistan for a solid year. That is 100% not the case. He never served any overseas time at all. Uh... So that's just, it's just not true. And I mean, if you, if you want to say he got PTSD from his basic training, that's just laughable. And so he, there is no basis at all for the PTSD claim that so many on our supposed side just, just ate up. And I don't want to disparage anybody personally. I, I like a few of these guys. Some of the other ones I don't like at all. But, you know, I, I just feel like this was. A lot of people were just really eager to buy into this PTSD thing. I guess they've seen Rambo a few too many times or something. But So I'm going to cut the clip right there, but he goes way more into detail. If you want to learn more, I definitely suggest you check out his video. Again, his name is Ralph Retort. The link to his channel is in the description box. You should also subscribe to him. Now, the thing I want you to take from this video is that not everybody that murders somebody is mentally ill. See, every time there's a freaking murderer, right, every single time people automatically go, we need to do something about mental illness. Just assuming that the guy is mentally ill before we even find out whether or not he is or not. Here's a news flash. Only 3% of murderers are mentally ill, meaning that 97% of people that commit murder are mentally healthy. If you are freaking mentally ill, you are less likely to kill people, right? This happens every fucking time. Somebody kills somebody, right? What did their family do? Oh, well, we love him and we don't want to blame him, so let's just blame the mental illness. They're just using mental illness as a freaking scapegoat. I fucking hate that shit. Imagine if, if you have ADHD, right, and somebody murders somebody, and then they blame the ADHD, and suddenly everybody looks at you like you're a murderer. Wouldn't well, that piss you off? Guys, there is no mental illness that will turn you into a murderer, right? So blaming freaking mental illness for murder makes no damn sense. Blame the person. 
Don't blame a mental illness that has nothing to do with it. The only thing that will make a murderer is if somebody stops valuing human life. And the mentally healthy do this more so than the mentally ill. We need to treat our mentally ill better and with more respect. And that also means stop blaming them for shit that they're not even doing. Stop assuming that they're responsible for every crime that's committed. That's what I want you to take away from this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you on the next episode. Oh yeah, and don't forget to smash that like button.